Hello and welcome back to Star Trek Fleet Command. So as a request again from a dear friend of mine, uh, Borg, uh, we are going to do a faction slash mining survey into faction survey ships video. Uh, this will be split into completely different parts. So today's video, we're going to be talking about how to progress into the faction miners and how which faction miners to go for subject to what you want as a player uh that's what this video is going to be about then in the next video we're going to be talking about how to best crew the different ships from basically the early ships all the way up to the faction ships themselves as they will require separate crews uh, or different crews to utilize what they can do best and then as a sort of uh it's not going to be an extra video but we're going to be talking about the best way to or put on a what the best crew is or to put on a ship for base raiding and what and we're going to talk about in this video what best ships to use for base raiding uh, for obviously different levels from the early game to to obviously eventually late game for some player or even up to my tier which I will go through with you so uh, hopefully anyone that's in Borg's Alliance uh, can get referred to this video and get referred to the next video and it'll be useful to you and obviously anyone else who is out there, hopefully it, you can find use from this video as well. So let's crack on. Uh, quick caveat, thank you to all new subscribers as always. Tried to hit a thousand before the 15th of February. Uh, other than that, let's move on. So first of all, you're going to start off. You're going to start off with the ECF Fortunate. Uh, this is a little mining ship that is, quite frankly, pretty awful. Uh, the only good thing about this is it mines par steel at a decent sort of rate. It's not amazingly good. Uh, it's not overly terrible. Um, it's just okay for its level. Uh, it has a bonus towards par steel. Moving on from that, because you do want to drop these as soon as you can, and you do want to move into the envoys. So once you go into the envoys, these are a little bit better. These mine trit as their base standard, uh, and these are not horrendously bad ships to utilize. They're okay. Their protection cargo is not amazing again, but we'll show you how to get that up very shortly. And the minor bonus, again, is something that is not overly great in this ship either. Again, this is a ship that you're going to utilize very early on in the game, all the way up to probably something around level 20. I can't exactly remember when you get the horizon. But basically what you want to do is you're going to go from the envoy and you're going to work your way up to getting a ECS horizon. Once you get your horizon, this is the ship that you can use pretty much from the point you get it all the way through to late game if you really decide to. However... Late game, there is some better ships that obviously, when I say late game, I'm talking, well, it's not late game. It's more mid game. You're going to use it from early game to mid game. Sorry, I'll rephrase it. It is mid game. Uh, so you're going to use this ship all the way up to pretty much you get into the level 30s. Uh, and you can still use it then if you really want to, or alternatively, you can move on to the faction miners, which we will come to uh, shortly. So just a quick rundown of the ECS Horizon. Again, not an, uh, it's, it's not a terrible ship. It can hold a pretty sizable cargo. It's not got a huge amount of protected cargo. Again, you can increase this. Uh, cargo capacity is, again, starting out is not overly amazing. But again, can be increased. Mining bonus is pretty decent, though. It gets a mining bonus towards Delithium as well. So overall, it's not a horrendous ship, but it's not a great ship at the same time. I will show you mine and what I did with mine. Don't want to go and refresh. So my horizon is sat here. So I got mine to tier five because that's when I unlocked the faction ships and that's when I moved over. So if you get yours to around tier, tier five, I, I didn't level mine up either. Uh, but leveling up a ship is only useful if you want this ability here, the mining ability of the ship to increase uh delithium mining i never do so leveling the ship up is completely irrelevant to me for this ship uh the only thing that you want to increase really is the mining laser as you can see there so if you go down to my my crew so 
this is again not the best stats and we'll go into the better stats in the next video when we talk about the crew but you got a base of 375,000 cargo capacity uh, you got mining bonus of 1100 which is incredibly good uh, for a ship of this level and protection cargo is only 18,000 as well which again is not incredibly great you can again increase that depending on the crew that you use again coming in the next video so moving on from that ship so then you go into the faction ships you've got three different faction ships that you can choose from uh, in the game uh, I'll talk about the other ships that have just been added to the game like the Amalgam uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Meridian and we'll talk a little bit about North Star, Ferengi uh, and Botany Bay uh, very shortly but moving on to the faction ships and this is where I will stop we will talk about the faction ships and then that's where I'm going to stop there is obviously higher faction ships than this uh, survey ships however I'm not going to talk about them as I don't know much about them and I can't see them so, <laughs> so we will talk about the faction ships for this and this only. So we're good to survey. There we go. That makes better. So you've got three different faction ships. You've got the Cavort, which is the Klingon ship. You got the USS Antares, which is the Federation, and you got the Valkis, which is Romulan. So these are the ships that you're going to want to definitely one thousand get. Thank get. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you want to going to get at least one of each of them. And if you want to obviously specialize in a certain faction, maybe even getting two of one. Um, it's completely up to you. I personally only got one of each. Um, and I then it depends on what faction you then want to work towards. So you have to think realistically, uh, you're probably only going to be able to work towards maybe one faction at a time, to get that to the highest level. Or alternatively, if at a push, you might be able to work at two factions at a time, which is it can be done. Uh, but free to play, you're probably just going to do one faction at a time. I've personally picked the Valkus as I'm working towards Romulan. Uh, but you can pick any free, any one you want. The good thing about these ships is they have incredibly good cargo capacities. They have incredibly good mining speed, depending on which faction you go towards. So if you want to go towards the Cavort, you will get an added bonus towards mining crystal and as you can see here we are at tier 3 level 15 which is the max level for this tier and we get 124.6 percent increase to our mining capabilities uh, this might be different due to research and stuff i'm not entirely sure but if it's not then you get that from directly from the level so you do want to level these sh ships up as much as possible for their tiers because that does directly impact the ship's ability just to let you know so moving down to the things that are important, this is a tier three ship, as you can see. Uh, this cargo capacity is seven hundred fifty-eight thousand, so you've jumped up an incredible amount of cargo capacity. Uh, and then protection again is pretty lacklusterful, but you can increase that with different officers. And then mining bonus again, pretty lacklusterful for this tier. It does increase. Uh, event obviously it will increase later on depending on what tier you get the ship to and if you increase the mining bonuses and stuff like that so i've got my for example my vacless to tier 6 and and level 25 it can go to level 30 but it's being able to get the xp so if i go to the same stats as you can see here my cargo capacity without any added officers is already at 1 million protection cargo is 36 000, and my mining bonus is 1475 for this ship at tier six and obviously when you go into the ship itself you want to try and upgrade the mining laser probably first because it means you can mine faster and then you want to upgrade the cargo because this adds certain cargo capacities but to be honest i wouldn't worry about this too much it is very good because it does add the cargo extra cargo capacity but most of your added protection cargo or cargo capacity is going to come from officers again talk about in the next video over the night then you've got the warp range this is the Second thing I would upgrade, I would go mining laser and then I would upgrade the warp engine uh, as the warp engine obviously directly increases the range. And when you get to higher levels, you want to be able to mine further away due to the fact that the further away you go uh, into the higher level systems, uh, all the nodes have more resources on there for you don't have to keep resetting your miner as often. Uh, and that's what you want to do with these ships. You want to specialize. I can't show you the Antares. Well, I can show you the Antares, but it is currently mining. Uh, at the moment here it is it is currently mining with 
the crew that I use for it, which again, I'll come on. Spoiler alert. There you go. But there, this is only tier three as well. And this is what we are currently rocking with this crew. But yeah, that's a little bit of a spoiler for next video. And then you come on to the specialized mining ships. So they are special. So you've got Klingon ships or the Klingon mining vessel, which go to ships. There we go. The Klingon ship, which will do crystal. You've got the Federation ship, which does gas. And then you've got the Valkus or the Romulan ship, which does ore. So depending on which one you're going to go down, they all specialize in their own, obviously, ore and resource. And then obviously you've got the different uh, specialized ships, I guess. So you've got Botany Bay. This is an incredibly useful ship for early game players. This is a ship that you definitely going to want to get. If you want to do base raiding, this is, again, another ship that you're going to want to get because it has an incredibly humongous cargo capacity for its level. And it is incredibly, I wouldn't say incredibly easy to level up, but it is a lot easier than leveling up a lot of the other ships uh, compared compared to the price of the other ships. This is incredibly easy to level up. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the others whilst we're, whilst we're already in this tab. So then you go on to the North Star. This is more of a attacking survey ship. This can be leveled up to be incredibly powerful and it is utilized at early game before you get your tier three ships mainly. Uh, you can utilize the North Star as a, an attacking ship. I wouldn't use it as a mining vessel unless you only want to mine, unless you know someone can't attack you uh, and steal the cargo because it has an incredibly small cargo capacity. You want to use your Ferengi Devor to mine your Latinum nodes. Uh, this mines with the research will mine incredibly fast. So bear that in mind. Uh, it will do it incredibly fast. We'll go over the over like protection cargo. So keep an eye on it. Uh, you can get a full cargo pretty much if you have the good level of ship and you have a good research for it. You probably get a full cargo within probably 15 to 20 minutes. So you have to keep an eye on that. And the new ship that they've just added into the game very recently, probably last two months, is the Meridian. Uh, this is to mine your isogen. So you get an extra bonus towards mining isogen. And there is skins and retrofits that you can put onto this ship to obviously mine even faster uh, and then you go on to the very very new ship that you've added into the game which is the amalgam so this ship is for base raiding and this ship is solely to raid bases the cargo capacity before doing anything is already over half a million and the protection cargo is nineteen thousand. mining bonus is okay but mainly you're in it for the cargo capacity, which I imagine will go incredibly high. It also has a certain bonus towards the ship. So take 0.01% of the defeated enemy's cargo. This ability ignores your cargo maximum. So even if you have a full cargo, you will st still take the 0.1%. And if you're attacking a base, 0.01% could be still quite significant. Uh, especially if they have literally millions or even billions of resources available to steal. So this is what this is for. This is to attack uh, enemy bases. It's a bit of a mishmash of Klingon slash Romulan parts, and it is relatively cool. Giant cargo ring around the side. And yeah, that's what this is for. Um, I haven't got it as of yet, but you can obviously get it later in the game. But other than that, that is pretty much the breakdown of survey ships, what you should go towards. Try and move on from the ECS and the Envoy as quick as humanly possible to get towards the ECS horizon. Once you're at the horizon, use the horizon, level it up to a decent enough level until you get to level 30. Once you're at level 30, unlock all three of the faction ships if you can do so. If you can't unlock all three, unlock at least the one that you're working towards the faction as it will help you out. Then you want to want to utilize the horizon still until you've got the faction ship of your desire to at least the same mining level capability as the horizon, because otherwise the horizon will probably still mine faster than whatever ship you've chosen. Uh, so at least match the mining capabilities. It will slightly be different due to the fact that obviously depending on what type of resource you're going towards, don't use a vacuum to mine crystal or gas. You may as well use uh, the Horizon, for example, as it gets a bonus towards all of them, not just the uh, ore in this case. And same goes for the other ships. 
If you only have one, use that ship to mine whatever it's best at and then use the horizon to mine whatever the other resources are until you unlock all three ships and then get all three ships to if a minimum of tier three, I would suggest. And then from that, from tier three onwards, then at least far as focus on the soul ship you want to help your faction out. If you haven't got the Botany Bay, definitely get the Botany Bay as it is an incredibly powerful ship. I will show you the cargo capacity before anything else is added to it, i.e. the officers or anything like that. So if I go to Botany Bay, where the hell are you? The, oh, you're already out, aren't you? You're in my other ship. There we go. So the Botany Bay is currently mining for me. It has got slightly officers, slight officers in it, but as you can see, these officers are not the best officers with regards to protection cargo or cargo capacity. And I've already got 409,000. Bearing in mind, this is a tier nine. So this is completely maxed out Barney Bay, but it's not that hard to do to max it out. In my opinion, it's probably one of the easier ships in the game to max out. So you can get a cargo capacity of 409,000 and higher, depending on what crew you use and protection cargo for this one in particular is 55,000. Um, again, can be higher than this if you use the correct crew layout don't worry about the mining bonus you're not going to use this for anything other than probably data mining or as i use it for uh for isogen mining when i'm not around and it's just running in the background because again because it's got such a high ca capacity for both of them and um, so yeah that's what you're going to utilize for this ship overall it's an incredibly powerful ship to be fair uh, and the good thing about this ship as well, the Botany Bay, you can increase when the base decides to not want to break on me. You can go to the research and if you go to the research tab and go to, I believe it's Outlaws. There it is. You can increase certain things with regards to the Botany Bay. So you can increase the door data storage for the research. So again, increasing the protection cargo on this ship. And you can increase the warp speed, the impulse speed, which makes you even harder to get because it, it means you can obviously travel much further. Uh, and then you got a few of the different hull upgrades as well for the Botany Bay. Again, all little things that you can increase just to help the Botany Bay get, increase its cargo capabilities even higher than before. That's this video. It's been quite a long video, but Borg did want me to go into detail about it. Look forward to the next video, which will be about the officers and the crew layouts for them ships. I have done videos in the past about it, so you might want to check them out. Uh, however, I will do an update video in the coming days. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.